What's up, Yoda Tech? I am uh, putting on my IFS ASIN manual locking hubs. Uh, I had already switched to Warren premium locking hub manual locking hubs from uh, the original automatic locking hubs. Uh, that gave me the kit with the locking bolt, adjuster bolt, and star washer. Uh, those are still adjusted to specs after pulling off the Warren premium hub, so I'm going to leave those in and install the ASIN. Um, manual locking hub kit 80, 86 to uh, 95 IFS. I have the gasket ready, all the cover to body um, bolts, uh, washers, cone washers, cleaned and lightly greased on the outside so they'll pop off easy if I have to get them off, and hub cover uh, to rotor hub body so I have those bolts as well so everything is ready to go and put these on they're all fully greased and just lightly just a light coating on everything uh, inside of there I'm going to do something a little bit of a video on that as well that I've done uh, that I have to clean up so now I'm going to install these hubs and uh, basically explain the controls. these I have everything ready as you can see like I said, lightly grease the cone washers. Have paper towels ready. Have some certain tools here that help make the job a little bit easier. Um, showing another member that was over here yesterday. This is a great tool to be able to just quickly dial things in really quick just to get them snug and then finish it off instead of you know turning the wrench. Um, Sometimes they just work better for me. I, I like to, to be able to take it and spin it. So this these work good. You're going to need a torque wrench, 3H uh, drive, and you're going to be able uh, you're going to be cranking these down to 21 to 23 pounds on the hub body uh, to um, hub assembly or axle hub. Um, with the nuts, washers, and cone washers. And you're going to be bolting the cover to the body at 7 pounds after you make sure everything's working. So, first, I already, repla I already replaced the gasket here uh, from the warm premiums, and it's in perfect condition. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, nice and smooth. Just make sure there's no grease on anything where it's going to join which is very common. It's going to you know, ooze out a little bit from when I uh, actually put all new Japanese um, OEM actually bearings and uh, races and all that back in when I did my rotors. Uh, the rotors are new and all that. Once I get the hub body and or the hub assembly completely on, I'll actually put on, uh, clean up the brakes and I have to replace some pins, uh, retaining pins and stuff like that, springs. Uh, but for now, just want to get the hub covers on. So. Uh, one of the tricks you're also going to need, which helps, is to have something like this, a long screwdriver. Um, I basically put it in here carefully up against the area where, uh, try not to do against two studs, you just want one of the flat portions against a portion where a lug nut is not going to sit. And you're not going to smash it anyway, nothing's over 21, uh, 22, 23 pounds. So I just hold it like this basically and crank them down um, on the CV portion, which I'll also show. Uh, I use the same thing inside of there to hold the CV still. I let it come up and stop on the frame or cross member, and that way I can crank those bolts down to 61 pounds. So, okay. So now I want to make sure I have this ready, but first I got to put the hub on. And you look for the dowels. Two dowels on each one can't can't go on any other way. So gasket's already on. Everything's cleaned up. Just really quickly make sure that's clean. Yep. So uh, the PO had left a couple little spots with gasket, but uh, the insides were pretty haggard. So I cleaned them up really well and uh, greased up the hubs, and they're ready to go back on. So.
All right. So the dowels, line them up. And make sure first your spacer and snap ring is on here so that this won't move at all. A lot of people will pull the eight, uh, automatic hubs apart and they'll forget the spacer. Before the body goes on, this has to be there. If you just have the snap ring and not the spacer on the end of the hub assembly, it will slop around a lot and it could snap loose and it did sit pretty sloppy uh, yesterday when we were messing around. So you're going to put this dial this sometimes a little bit in order to get it to slide onto the splines. Giving me a little trouble. Let me turn it over just for the hell of it. Mm. And there we go. That was kind of scary. <laughs> uh, it's got to go on, you know. The other one came off, so. Alright, now I have the hub buddy on. First thing that goes in is the cone washers. slide a cone washer lightly greased on the outside and the inside if you have a q-tip um, and uh, that way they'll pop out easier you just put a nut up to the end of the stud and I'll show that after I get these on but put those in some of them don't want to slide in so far because uh, in this case like with many guys uh, the previous owner of these hubs banged on the edge of the hub to knock the cone washers out. It's easier, better to do it on the studs, on the stud ends with a nut, even with the stud, because then you don't bugger up the edge of the hub. But in any case, they will go on. So They were tight in there when they came out, so they just are under a little tension, and as they go in, they'll, they'll lock in a little bit. And you can just tap them in slightly or just wait till you get the nuts on. So now you got the cone washers in. You're going to put in these flat washers. It will come off any of them. I after, you actually have to use the, reuse a lot of stuff. Not a lot, but a few things with the worn kit. So you put these over the cone washers. on the outer part with these nuts. The nuts go next. Just get them started um, if you have a socket or something that uh, like I do there, the hand socket that you can just kind of spin them on pretty easy. I'll show you in a second. Um, I actually have another tool that I like even better that I'll grab for this. It's a pivoting socket wrench. And if you want, you can always turn this around and it doesn't matter. The cover, cover can only go on one way. So just to get you a little light and better angle. Um, this is nowhere near as dirty of a job as the CVs, uh, especially rebooting them. <laughs> but it can be very dirty. And you want to get things clean, especially that are going to be going inside. This is not really crucial or critical. If you want to remove any sealant or any debris that might cause them to bind or whatever. So, now I have this, actually. 
also, which is a pivoting socket wrench. This allows me to, you know, wrench like I normally would, but also just to turn them in. And they'll bind up sometimes on the stud until you get them all the way and just kind of go across. So, and you could also use this, like I said, which is a handy tool. Um, I use it all the time. Um, these go to 21 to 23 pounds. And, like I said, the hub cover bolts, which the gasket needs to go first. So it's seven pounds. I'm going to grab a little uh, parts cleaner as well, just a tiny bit, and clean the outside of the hub cover to hub body portion where the gas is going to go. I want that clean. So, and if I touch it again, I'll clean it up again. No big deal. So, you're going to have your screwdriver ready. You can have your torque wrench ready. And then before you do that, you're going to, if you want, it's not cr critical, you could do it either way, um, you're going to put the hub body to axle end retainer bolt in. And it's a fixed nut with a lock nut uh, underneath it. It is a split washer, as you can see there, maybe. Um, this goes into the end of the axle like this. And a lot of times what people will do, I actually saw a couple threads, and it had happened to me as well, um, is they'll have this in, and they'll start to try and torque it down, and they'll think it's stripped because it's turning. And once you've done the CVs and everything's smoother, you can't see right away the axle's turning. <laughs> so. Um, basically, you want to block it like this, or even easier, have someone stand on the brake. In my case, unlike yesterday, I don't have someone here um, to help me do this. So, I've got this So, I've got this prepared at uh, 7 pounds for the cover bolts and I'll loosen it tighten the locker on the bottom of the torque wrench stop this hub from turning on me. And I'm going to go around in a cross pattern and lock these down to 21 pounds. I've already got them down to probably 10 uh, with my hand socket, so I'm going to go down just till I hear the click. back and forth again in the crisscross. Well, clicked. clicked. Some will loosen up as you're going in the crisscross. So not a huge deal. You don't have to do them like 10 pounds, 12 pounds, 15 pounds, and then yeah. this one, for example. I forgot to tighten, so, okay. and make sure they're all locked. Uh, especially things like this, I avoid power tools or air wrenches. I mean, if it's screwed up here, eh, possibly. 
basically starting over with the uh, new studs and everything in the hub body. So, no thanks. All right. So now I got that on, and I want to reset this and do this bolt right here, the the hub body to axle end retaining bolt, and that's going to be. It's also a 12 millimeter, and it's going to be. 13 pounds. pounds. Oh, you know what? That's right. That's not going to work. That turns the axle free. So, I have to actually, in this case, to lock this center bolt, I need to stick this. I'm going to get down on the ground, actually, get a better angle. To stick this into the axle, CV axle end, inner end, to the body there. This will top stop it from turning. This this is up against the differential, the C V flange end to diff flange and mounting bolts. And I go on the center bolt and I'm just gonna go to thirteen pounds. It shouldn't take a second. That's it. Just have to keep it from turning. And so that's the hub. Three wheel hub body is assembled and installed. Okay. Now I gotta put the cover on. And this is the trickier part. Uh, that it's not tricky, but it can be screwed up easily. On the Paul and clutch, the Paul has tabs right here. And I'll shine a light on them even more to show you. Right here a tab on the end of this that sticks over in between any one of the clutch um, teeth that are two you know two teeth close together that that tab right there goes right there okay and that tab has to go in either this spot or this spot that's flat that does not have any teeth it has to be able to move freely a short distance uh, or these will not work so now I have the hub in free position, okay. And factory service manual says to pull the pull the clutch and pawl all the way up in the into the hub dial journal till it's seated. So it's seated, and if I turn it too far, it'll go pat. It'll if I turn it too tight, it'll actually go out of free. So I want to make sure it's at free, kind of snug, and then put it on free exactly on the dial. And that's that. Okay? So now this is going to go on here with those tabs. There's one tab. So I'm going to put this tab in the upper slot that has no teeth. It's just a flat surface. So I'll put the upper one and the lower one in at the same time, kind of guide it in. Right? And first thing you do for that, I've cleaned both surfaces, is put the gasket right here and just remember where the tab is right there where my thumb is needs to go into this flat spot right here okay so I'm going to put that there slide it up over the ball first. That would probably be easier for me to do, so I'm going to do that. And I'm going to slide it right up against the, the body here. Okay. And now I can put this in, make sure where the tabs are.
right here. So this tab has to go into this slot right here that's flat. That's it. Once it seats, before I assemble anything or put the bolts in, looks alright, huh? Cleaned up the body and everything. So I want to put this tight up against the, the assembly here, and when I turn the axle right now, it does not turn. Does not turn the wheel. Okay, it's turning. I can turn the CV, and it's not turning the wheel. So I know that it's in free position. Then I want to lock it, and it goes smoothly to lock. And I hold it on tight while I turn the CV again. It's kind of an odd angle here, so just get a paper towel to help me. There, and I can hear it's locked. And when I turn, put hold the cover on and turn the hub, I can see the CV is turning back there. So, uh, it's in working condition, everything's good. I want to start immediately getting a couple of bolts in. And before I do that, actually, I want to turn it back to free before I do that. Okay? And in the case of automatic locking hubs, a lot of times, even if you put the lock washers in and everything else, you're going to turn it, you go back a click, it'll unlock. I mean, you barely have to move backwards. You could even just roll an inch and it will unlock. Now the CVs are free from the locking hub. So now that's locked. I mean, I know it's functioning how it's supposed to. And this is where this tool comes in handy. These are 10 millimeter. So um, you could also use a, a screwdriver type. Uh, that would work good. And I just want to get two in for now so that it'll stay in place. 